Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for May 4th. And I'm reading 1 Chronicles 9 through 11. I had to make sure I had it right. So 9 through 11 of 1 Chronicles from the World English Bible. Verse 1. So all Israel were listed by genealogies, and behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. Judah was carried away captive to Babylon for their disobedience. Now the first inhabitants who lived in their possessions in their cities were Israel the priests, the Levites, and the temple servants. In Jerusalem lived the children of Judah and the children of Benjamin and the children of Ephraim and Manasseh. Uthai the son of Ahimud, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, of the children of Perez, the son of Judah, of the Shilonites, Messiah, the firstborn and his sons, of the sons of Zerah, Jeuel and their brothers, 690, of the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasanua, and Ibniah, the son of Jeroam, and Elu, the son of Uzi, the son of Mikri, and Meshulam, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah, and their brothers, according to all their generations, 956. All these men were heads of their father's households by their father's houses. Now, I think this is the last chapter of genealogy, so hopefully we'll get into something else today that, with this next two chapters. Verse 10. Of the priests, Jediah, Jehorah, Jachin, and Ezariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zedak, Marioth, Mahitub, the ruler of God's house, and Adiah, the son of Jehor, no, Jeroham, the son of Pasher, the son of Machijah, and Maasai, the son of Adiel, the son of Jazerah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Meshulamith, the son of Immer, and their brothers, heads of their father's houses, 1,760 very able men for the work of the service of God's house. Of the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Hashub, the son of Azirkam, the son of Hashabiah, the sons of Merari, and Bakbakar, Hiresh, Galal, and Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, and Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Galal, the son of Jaduthan, and Barakiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkaniah, who lives in the villages of the Nidophathites. The gatekeepers, Shalom, Akub, Talmon, Ahimon, and their brothers, Shalom was the chief, who previously served in the king's gate eastward. They were the gatekeepers for the camp of the children of Levi. Shalom, the son of Kor, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, and his brothers of his father's house, the Korahites, were over the work of the service, keepers of the threshold of the tent. Their fathers had been over Yahweh's camp, keepers of the entry. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, was ruler over them in time past, and Yahweh was with him. Zechariah, the son of Meshelamiah, was gatekeeper of the door of the tent of meeting. All these who were chosen to be gatekeepers in the thresholds were 212. These were listed by genealogy in their villages, whom David and Samuel, the seer, ordained in their office of trust. So they and their children had the oversight of the gates of Yahweh's house, even the house of the tent, as guards. On the four sides were the gatekeepers toward the east, west, north, and south. Their brothers and their villages were to come in every seven days from time to time to be with them. For the four chief gatekeepers who were Levites were in the office of trust and were over the rooms and over the treasuries of God's house. They stayed around God's house because the duty was on them. And to their duty was it opening morning by morning. Excuse me. Certain of them were in charge of the vessels of service for these were brought in by count and these were taken out by count. Some of them also were appointed over the furniture and over all the vessels of the sanctuary, over the fine flour, the wine, the oil, the frankincense, and the spices. Some of the sons of the priests prepared the mixing of the spices. Mattathiah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shulam, the Korahite, had the office of trust over the things that were baked in pans. Some, So was he a baker? Hmm. Some of the brothers of the sons of the Korahites were over the showbread to prepare it every Sabbath. These are the singers. Heads of the father's household of the Levites who lived in the rooms and were free from other service for they were employed in their work day and night. These were the heads of the father's households of the Levites throughout their generations, chief men. They lived at Jerusalem. Jael, the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Makkah, lived in Gibeon with his firstborn son, Abdon, Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gidor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth became the father of Shimeon, and they also lived with their brothers in Jerusalem near their brothers. Ner became the father of Kish, Kish became the father of Saul, Saul became the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. 
The son of Jonathan was Merib Baal. Merib Baal became the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Pithon, Melech, Tariah, and Ahaz. Ahaz became the father of Jerah. Jerah became the father of Elamath, Asmavath, and Zimri. Zimri became the father of Moza. Moza became the father of Binia, and Raphael, his son, Eliash, his son, and Azel, his son. Azel had six sons whose names are these, Azekam, Bochera, Ishmael, Shariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Chapter 10. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines followed hard after Saul and after his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, Malchishua, and the sons of Saul. The battle went hard against Saul, and the archers overtook him, and he was distressed by reason of the archers. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and thrust me through, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. Excuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was terrified. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he did likewise and fell on his sword and died. So Saul died with his three sons and all his house together, died together. When all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that, they fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead. They abandoned their cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived in them. On the next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent it into the land of the Philistines all around to carry the news to their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head to the house of Dagon. When all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons and brought them to Jabesh and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his trespass, which he committed against Yahweh, because of Yahweh's word, which he didn't keep, and also because he asked counsel of one who had a familiar spirit to inquire, and didn't inquire of Yahweh. Therefore he killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. Chapter 11. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David to Hebron, Hebron saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, even when Saul was king, it was you who led out and brought into Israel. Yahweh your God said to you, you shall be the shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over my people Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and David made a covenant with them in Hebron, Hebron before Yahweh. And they anointed David king over Israel, according to Yahweh's word by Samuel. David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, also called Jebus, and the Jebusites and the inhabitants of the land were there. The inhabitants of Jebus said to David, you will not come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same as David's city. David said, whoever strikes the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. Joab, the son of Jeruah, went up first and was made chief. David lived in the stronghold. Therefore, he called it David's city. He built the city all around from Milo, even around, and Joab repaired the rest of the city. David grew greater and greater for Yahweh of armies was with him. Now these are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who showed themselves strong with him in his kingdom together with all Israel to make him king according to Yahweh's word concerning Israel. This is a number of the mighty men whom David had. Jeshobim, the son of Hakumanite, the chief of the 30, he lifted his spear against 300 and killed them at one time. After him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahoite, who was one of the three mighty men. He was with David at Pastamim, and there were Philistines were gathered together to battle, where there was a plot of ground, excuse me, ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. They stood in the middle of the plot, defended it, and killed the Philistines, and Yahweh saved them by a great victory. Three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock to David, into the cave of Adullam, and the army of the Philistines were encamped in the valley of Raphaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem at that time. David longed and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. The three broke through the army of the Philistines, drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took and brought it to David. But David would not drink any of it, but poured it out to Yahweh, and said, My God forbid me that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of these men who have put their lives in jeopardy? For they risked their lives to bring it. Therefore he would not drink it. The three mighty men did these things. Abishai, the brother of Joab, he was the chief of the three, for he lifted up his spear against three hundred and killed them, and had a name among the three. Of the three, he was more honorable than the two and was made their captain. However, he wasn't included in the three. What? Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of valiant men of Kabziel, who had done mighty deeds, killed the two sons of Ariel of Moab. 
He also went down and killed a lion in the middle of the pit on a snowy day. He killed an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high. Let's see, that is seven feet, six inches, it says. So these, many of these were giants. Um, verse 23, in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with the staff, plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, did these things and had a name among the three mighty men. Behold, he was more honorable than the 30, but he didn't attain to the three and David set him over his guard. The mighty men of the armies also included Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shammah, the Herorite, Helez, the Pelonite, Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite, Abiezer, the Anathothite, Sibachai, the Hushathite, Eli, the Ahohite, Maharai, the Netophathite, wow, he led the son of Bana, the net of Faithite, Ithai, the son of Ribai, of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Beniah, the Pirithonite, Hurai, of the brooks of Gaash, Abiel, the Arpathite, Asmaveth, the Bahirmite, Eliaba, the Shal Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem, the Gizanite, Jonathan, the son of Shagi, the Herorite. I thought we were done with genealogies. This is chapter 11. Jonathan, the son of Shaggy, the Herorite. Ahiam, the son of Sacher, the Herorite. Eliphal, the son of Ur. Hefer, the Mechorathite. Ahijah, the Pelonite. Hezro, the Carmelite. Narai, the son of Esbai. Joel, the brother of Nathan. Mibhar, the son of Hagri. Zelek, the Ammonite. Nahari, uh, the Barathite, the armor bearer of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Bereb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad, now is that Uriah the husband of Abigail, who David had killed? I wonder. Um, Zadab the son of Alhai, Adina the son of Shiza, the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and 30 with him, Hanan the son of Maka, and Jos. Joshaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashtarathite, Jema and J Jael, the sons of Hotham, the Ararite, Jediel, the son of Shimri, Doha, his brother, the Tizite, Eliel, the Mahavite, Jerabai, the Joshaviah, the sons of Elnam, Elnam, and Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, and Obed, and Josiel, the Mezub. That is it. Let me see if there's any good footnotes. No, just the one about that Egyptian that was about seven feet, six inches or 2.28 meters tall. Seven foot, six inches is a very tall person. And I'm pretty sure it was a giant, which was more than likely a hybrid race. Unsanctioned by God. That's why he was destroying them. They were... Um, it's presumed they were, I don't know if presumed is the right word, but they were just cannibalistic savages. Much more to that story. But anyway, that's it for today's reading. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. Till tomorrow.